Welcome to Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. As the pandemic unfolds, how do you best position yourself as an investor to be profitable and mitigate loss? We're talking about the real estate market, the stock market, and specific actionable things that you can do for your family and your real estate today on Get Rich Education. Property investors can get killed with maintenance costs. That's less likely when you buy brand new construction. Let me tell you about JWB Real Estate Capital in bustling Jacksonville, Florida. They pioneered the build to rent model where you can invest in new construction, turnkey rental property. That's why JWB was featured on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. To learn more and see inventory, start now at newconstructionturnkey.com. The company that's provided our listeners with more loans than anyone is Ridge Lending Group, NMLS 42056. You can finance more than 10 single families up to fourplexes. Serving most U.S. states, their knowledge and experience leads to your financial freedom. They're number one in the investment space. Pre-qualify and then chat with President Chaley Ridge personally. Start on your next investment property loan right now at RidgeLendingGroup.com. You're listening to the show that has created more financial freedom than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. Welcome to Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold, and no matter where you're listening to us, any of the 188 nations, your life has changed due to the pandemic. Just when you learn to replace your handshake with an elbow bump, now you can't do either one. Yes, your life looks different. We are here in the social distancing era with major events all canceled and the closure of businesses and schools and entertainment venues it is clear that the global efforts to slow the spread of the coronavirus is an unprecedented experience for you and I. With people needing to stay home, it creates some new ways of socialization. For my haircut this week, I don't think I'm going to be going out to get it. I'm hoping that my wife can figure out how to cut my hair at home. I can't go to the gym. Thank goodness I have a home gym, as modest as it is. This is literally life-changing stuff for you, altering your patterns and your habits and my patterns and habits. You might see your spouse more now. You might be homeschooling your kid now. This is an emotional process for you and I. Your relationships with people and things have changed. You're more likely to be listening to me from home rather than out and about and not from work. But wait. Now for you, maybe work is home, kind of. If you're working from home, you're now about to also find out which meetings really could have instead been an email all this time. Yes, it is simply a strange time to be a human being. And the pandemic has stirred up more uncertainty than just social faux pas and awkwardness. It's created a breathtaking 32% stock market drop. More on that later. The slowing economy means that oil prices have fallen with the resounding thud. Mortgage rates hit record lows two weeks ago. The combination of those things, that might make you, the real estate investor, giddy with your predicament. You might even have what feels like an extended adult spring break at home with your family, depending on your situation. But the larger economic slowdown can ensnare everyone. Yes, the real estate investor too. And some help is on the way. Just last week, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac announced that they are suspending foreclosures and evictions for at least 60 days. So we're talking about a lot of conventional loans there. HUD is doing the same thing. HUD, that basically means FHA loans. So I guess that property owners don't have to pay their mortgages and tenants don't have to pay their rent for a little while either. That was followed by the state of New York declaring that certain borrowers in that state could forego their mortgage payments for up 
to 90 days. And there is just so much news about payment forgiveness and everything else related to the economy and the pandemic that it can be pretty difficult to keep up. I'll tell you, I've had to scramble more than normal for this week to pull together the more relevant stories that affect you because so much is changing so fast. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said just last Friday, three days ago, that the deadline for Americans to file their taxes would be pushed back from April 15th to July 15th. That has got to be welcome news. Who wouldn't want that? In fact, Mnuchin tweeted, all taxpayers and businesses will have this additional time to file and make payments without interest or penalties. That's what he said. So that's a 90-day extension, some relief from the IRS for you. Now, how long will this kind of alternate society that we've now been reluctantly forming, well, how long will it linger on? How long will it last? I mean, self-isolation and playing the old risk board game or a battleship with your kids, that might be kind of cool at first, but that gets a little old after a while. It really gets old once you find that your kid is improving at chess faster than you and he's starting to beat you, but no one really knows. No one knows how long this is going to last. So therefore, it's hard to know whether people are overreacting or underreacting to the news. It's really hard to know. And I would cut people a break if you think they're reacting a little too strongly or not quite strongly enough, because it's difficult to know how to gauge this. Will this just last one month or six months or even longer? Well, the best, most trusted source I know of thinks that this will probably be with us through June. Yeah, that's three more months. Now, it might peak before that time, but who knows? And a lot of forecasts change because, again, there are quite a few unknowns here, but there are a few things that I do know. So let's talk about what we do know. There will always be an economy, even if things got far worse. There will always be an economy as long as there's a civilization. I mean, sheesh, there's an economy in Leavenworth, a maximum security prison. When this thing ends, if you've got a friend or a tenant or yourself that's been laid off, you're probably going to return to your job. But some people might never return to their job. You might view this through the lens of opportunity. If you have or have had a job that you're not in love with, this could give you time to find out what you're good at and what you like doing rather than just working for a paycheck. So use this time to ultimately find out what you want and then learn some new skills at the Khan Academy online or somewhere else. This could be an opportunity. There is an old saying, if your neighbor loses his job, it's a recession. If you lose your job, it's a depression. And more people are probably thinking about that today. But you've got to realize, recessions, they are indeed a frequent occurrence in the modern economy. In this 11-year economic expansion that we were on, that I will now call over, that was an all-time American record. In response to the pandemic, the Fed is effectively printing tens of billions of dollars and more to help keep banks liquid. This is a process that devalues your dollar. This is inflationary, which is good for borrowers long term. And this dollar printing, this is what makes investors scurry away from paper assets to real assets, real assets that can hold their value. Yeah, real things that can't be inflated away with profligate monetary policy. I'm talking about assets like water and timber and real estate, especially types of residential real estate. Now, if for any reason your income is disrupted, either because you're out of work or your tenant is having trouble making rent payments, if you're losing income, 
and you've got to play defense and you're a homeowner, you might have something to work with. Relief can come from your home equity line of credit, your HELOC. You can make withdrawals for emergencies. Sure, it was years ago that I talked about HELOCs for the first time. If you've got excess equity in your home, you can originate one of these. Since home equity is unsafe and illiquid and its rate of return is always zero, you can use that excess equity in your home. Go ahead and make it liquid. The HELOC can come in the form of a second mortgage and at last check on a primary residence, you could get an 80% combined loan to value ratio HELOC. How that works is if you have a $500,000 home, you could have $400,000 of total debt against it. That is that 80%, 400K debt on a 500K home. Okay, so then if currently your home has a 300K loan balance, you can potentially get a HELOC second mortgage for another 100K. All right, your 300K first mortgage plus a 100K HELOC added on, that has a sum of 400K, which is 80% of your home's value. So now you've got 100K out of your home. The way that this 100K HELOC works in this example is that your interest rate, it generally follows the federal funds rate, which the Fed has essentially dropped to 0%. Now you're not going to get 0% as an interest rate on a HELOC. You will pay a margin on top of that federal funds rate, but HELOC rates are really low now. Their interest is often tax deductible and you can spend the HELOC funds on anything. I mean, anything at all. You also have the flexibility of making interest only payments back on the HELOC or paying extra toward the principal if you prefer. So there's a nice option there. And I've gone deep on how HELOCs work on prior shows, so I won't do that here. But here's the message. If you think that you need some or want some liquidity, originate your HELOC and consider drawing against it, which means pulling the money out before the bank freezes withdrawals from your HELOC funds. Look, here's what happened to me during the 2007 to 2009 Great Recession. Homes were losing value then in that recession. We don't know whether that's going to happen in this one or not. But what happened is that banks flash froze HELOCs back then. It happened to me. I still remember getting the paper letter. It was from a major bank that you've heard of. I do remember getting that letter from the bank because I felt frustrated that they froze my funds, which was equity actually in a fourplex that I wasn't even living in anymore at the time. It was equity that I previously had access to with that HELOC. So I've told you on past shows that I cannot think of any reason to not have a HELOC second mortgage on your home as long as you've got adequate equity in it. That way you can choose to either use it by drawing against those HELOC funds or not. But you could just have the HELOC and it could be like an empty shell that you don't draw against. My point today is consider making a withdrawal on that HELOC before it's frozen. Now, say you do that and you're paying a 5% interest rate on that money. Maybe wherever you put those borrowed funds, you're making more than 5% on them because you're taking those funds and you're putting those on offense. And if so, that's great. That's positive arbitrage. You've got to love that. But what if instead you take those HELOC funds that you're paying 5% interest for and you go play defense and you have them invested in a vehicle that's making less than 5% interest for you and you're doing that just because you want some extra liquidity during an unknown time? Well, you know what I would say about that? What you're doing then is it's like you're paying an insurance premium if you're paying 5% interest and you're making less than 5% interest. You've got access to the funds. You're keeping them liquid. You could be hemorrhaging a bit each month, but then that bit that you're paying is really like paying an insurance premium in order to have access to your funds. Now, I don't like to tell people what to do. I like to tell people what I do, and I provide ideas and information here now, if you don't need funds or want funds, well, then there's less reason to tap your HELOC. Remember, too, 
A high mortgage balance is great asset protection. That's an asset protection tool against a bank foreclosure. In an adverse circumstance, the bank doesn't want to come after you if you still owe 400K on the loan. But see, instead, they would prefer to come after the family that only owes 40K on their loan because the bank could get that person's property as collateral and only lose out on the 40K that they would have had coming to them. See, the bank doesn't want to foreclose on your property where you, the homeowner, would still have owed them the 400K. They want to be sure that you're taken care of if you still owe the bank 400K. So my point is that if you need to play defense, have a HELOC, consider using it before it gets frozen, if it gets frozen. It might not get frozen. See, a big reason that HELOC draws were frozen during the Great Recession about 12 years ago is that housing was at the center of the 2007 to 2009 Great Recession. From the time that those HELOCs were originated back then, properties had often lost value. And as they lost value, that means that loan-to-value ratios went up, often in excess of 100%. So banks froze HELOCs so that they didn't get exposed to that risk. If you've got zero equity in your home, therefore no skin in the game, you're more likely to walk away as a homeowner. But see, if we do have a pandemic-induced recession, it's not housing-centered like that Great Recession was with those irresponsible lending practices that prevailed back then and the overbuilding of property that occurred back then. Today, instead, we've got responsible lending practices and an undersupply of homes. We're underbuilt. So the Great Recession, that was different and special. Now, I don't know if we're set up for a pandemic-induced recession or not, but I'd say there's a pretty good chance that we will have one. I'd say a more than 80% chance that we're actually starting into one right now. And we don't actually know that we're in a recession until the future because we have to look back and see two consecutive quarters of year-over-year GDP contraction. That's the definition of a recession. But we're really kind of due for a slowdown, and I think that we're in one now. It's worth remembering that recessions are actually a normal part of the economy. We have one every seven years or so. Our previous five recessions, they began in 1980, another one in 1981, then 1990, 2001, and finally the aforementioned Great Recession beginning in 2007. In three of those five recessions, three of those last five that I just mentioned, do you know what happened to home prices? Home prices went up. They increased in three of the last five recessions. Home prices increased in value anywhere from 1.9 to 4.8%. I'll link that in the show notes for you. So a recession sure doesn't necessarily mean a drop in property value. Residential real estate is indeed a recession resilient asset class, but it's not recession proof. The thing that you need to keep your eye on is, is your tenant keeping their job during this crisis so that they can pay the rent? By the way, do you know the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic? As Oxford defines it, an epidemic is a widespread occurrence of an infectious disease in a community at a particular time. And a pandemic is a disease prevalent over an entire nation or the world. So they mean about the same thing, but the pandemic is on a larger scale. Now, Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates has received attention recently in predicting that a pandemic was potentially humankind's greatest understated threat. In fact, let's listen to this short clip. This is Bill Gates more than three years ago in Davos, Switzerland. An epidemic, either naturally caused or intentionally caused, is the most likely thing to cause, say, 10 million excess deaths. Uh, and that it's pretty surprising how little preparedness there is for it. Yeah, Bill Gates sure has said quite a bit more about that, but he's appearing to be rather correct here. Well, what has administration in the United States done for a response? Our political leaders. Well, initially, Trump and company seemed to throw more money 
and fewer regulations at the problem, that's been changing somewhat as we've got more social controls and border closings now. But with the list of these administrative and policy news stories longer than a Walgreens receipt, the least you should know is that President Trump and Congress are aiding homeowners and renters alike. Free virus testing and an expansion of unemployment insurance. A stimulus package of over $1 trillion, with a T, over $1 trillion, that looks to involve direct payments to American households is really going to help provide relief to people. There is a lot of precedent for government bailouts in times of crisis. I mean, the U.S. government provided $15 billion to airlines after 9-11, $700 billion for banks to army crawl through the 2008 financial crisis, and $17 billion to automakers just after that. Whether you see bailouts as the right way and the ethical way to do things or not, there is that precedent. Fortunately, some of that help should include your tenant. We might see multiple injections of $1,000 each or more, putting that money directly into consumers' hands. That's the plan that's formulating. Just write virtually everyone a check. And a $1,000 check probably means more to your tenant than it does to you. This can really help Trump and Congress fill the gaps between cushions like paid leave and unemployment insurance. Though this is going to cause more long-term taxpayer debt in the future, yes, it sure will. I think a lot of people can really use the relief in the meantime. Think about it this way. To save their economies over the long run, Countries around the world are actively putting themselves into a recession. Productive nations and economies are actively plunging themselves into a recession left and right. Can you imagine that? But even though I'm a finance guy and a real estate investor, I think that is the right thing to do to put yourself into a recession. As odd as it sounds, the best way to heal the likely recession is not to try to fix the recession. It's to get into a recession by killing activity in order to control the virus. The best way to heal the economy is to get people to stay home and stop the spread and end this thing sooner. Look, if you're riding a bicycle and get a flat tire because there are nails on the road, well, then you don't get to your destination by patching the hole in the tire over and over and over again. You get to where you're going by cleaning up the nails on the road, which means that you and your bicycle have to go nowhere for a little while. And then when the nails are picked up, you quickly roll along to wherever you're going, just like the economy should quickly roll along nicely like it was, hopefully, back before the pandemic hit. So the fastest way to fix the economy is to actually go into a recession to stop the virus. As we've now learned, even though you might feel like you're in a digital age with TikTok videos and virtual reality and an app that digitizes your dinner receipts and everything else, this is kind of a reminder that humans still generate trillions in economic activity by coming into close physical face-to-face contact with one another, sitting at restaurants or assembling auto parts or getting haircuts or traveling on planes. But public health officials stress that to slow the spread of the coronavirus, we've all got to maintain a safe distance from each other. And that's even if we're healthy. But see, that still doesn't quite square up with our economy structure. And that's part of the problem. But be mindful that recessions and surprises happen constantly. This one feels a little more surprising for a few reasons, because a virus is sort of intangible. You can't see it. And then there's also the fact that we've had this great long run of 11 years. That was the longest economic expansion in American history. I think really that this pandemic is the biggest news story since 9-11, where you're just kind of like, I can't believe this is happening. 
but this will pass. It always does. Look at what we've had in the last not even 20 years here. We had 9-11, Hurricane Katrina, the Great Recession, Superstorm Sandy, and now you might call this the Great Shutdown. With the economic slowdown, I would expect it to be sudden, deep, and brief. I hope and expect that it will be sudden. It already has been sudden because it came up quickly. It should be deep with massive layoffs, and it should be relatively brief. That sure is my hope. There are two prior Get Rich Education episodes that are getting a lot of attention right now. One of them is named A Recession is Coming. I released that in November of 2018. One year later, I released an episode named Planning for a Recession that was released in November of 2019, just four months ago. A Recession is Coming is episode 215, and Planning for a Recession is episode 265, if that makes them easier for you to find. I'm coming back here with more with your pandemic investing strategy and mindset. This is Get Rich Education. Since 2014, the powerful Get Rich Education podcast has created more passive income for people than nearly any other show in the world. This show teaches you how to earn strong returns from passive real estate investing in the best markets without losing your time being a flipper or landlord. Show host Keith Weinhold writes for both Forbes and Rich Dad Advisors and delivers a new show every week. Since 2014, there's been millions of listener downloads in 188 world nations. He has A-list show guests include top-selling personal finance author Robert Kiyosaki. Get Rich Education can be heard on every podcast platform, plus it has its own dedicated Apple and Android listener phone apps. Build wealth on the go with the Get Rich Education podcast. Sign up now for the Get Rich Education podcast or visit GetRichEducation.com. Finally, with Total Control Financial, get checkbook control of your existing 401k and IRA funds to invest in real estate. Yes, you can move your retirement money into your own checking account, but you must avoid the little-known tax that you'll get hammered with in a self-directed IRA. Instead, start your QRP. Learn more and get your free copy of the QRP book by text messaging QRP in all capital letters to 72000. This is Ridge Lending Group's president, Shaley Ridge. Listen to Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold. And remember, don't quit your daydream. Hey, you're back inside Get Rich Education and welcome. You're squarely in the hashtag WFH era, the work from home era. Yes, this alternate world where working from home is not frowned upon and going to the office is frowned upon. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. I'd like to emphasize that no one really knows about the next turn that society and the economy will take during this pandemic. That's because we are in uncharted territory. I don't think very many people were alive to remember the Spanish flu of 1918. As far as the most recent territory that has been charted, last Friday, stocks, as measured by the S&P 500, fell more than 4%. So therefore, as of today, Monday, March 23rd, 2020, stocks have now fallen more than 32% from their recent high. How many people with 401ks have lost 32% of their accounts value? Some of them, maybe even more than that. And yes, that is just in the last month or two. And last week, stocks posted their worst week since the height of the financial crisis about 12 years ago. The bull market died of coronavirus. That's what happened. Now, why am I talking about stocks more than usual, both this week and last, since I've talked about the pandemic quite a bit on both of these shows? It's because stocks are often a leading indicator of what investors expect is coming. And note that I'm being kind by calling stock buyers true investors. A lot of them are just speculators. Now, a stock bear market, that's when stocks fall 20% or more from a recent high. Now, do you have any idea then how good of a predictor a bear market is of a coming recession? Well, I can tell you. 73% of stock bear markets have been accompanied by a follow-up recession. 
As a forward-looking mechanism, the stock market usually sends warnings about the economy before shrinking growth shows up in the data later on. So yes, in the 11 stock bear markets that we've had since World War II, eight of those 11 have resulted in a recession. That is 73%. While it remains to be seen, real estate may be insulated to some extent, and that is because of oh, a number of reasons. We've got tight residential inventory, we've got high buyer demand, low mortgage rates, and lower prices for lumber and oil. Recessions are not officially declared until the economy is already deep into them or after they've passed. That's something to keep in mind. We could look back later and say that the recession started this month, and that is because so much of our economy has to do with consumer spending. You buying a frappuccino, you filling up your car with gas, you buying a boat. Consumer spending accounts for about 70% of GDP, so you can see why there's going to be a likely GDP contraction. Now, here on the show, we spent the last few years focused on rental single-family homes and properties up to fourplexes in size. And though it's still a developing story, there has been some evidence that the ventilation system in larger apartment buildings can transmit the virus. That sounds really bad. I sure hope that that's not true. A lot of stories and a lot of research findings are still unfolding. I did talk to two prominent national mortgage loan officers last week. One of the two was Chaley Ridge, where they're just doing a ton of mortgage origination business for both income property purchases and refinances. The other mortgage loan officer, what they're doing is they're prioritizing new property purchases ahead of refinances there in their office. But one thing's for sure, low interest rates will outlast the coronavirus. Again, once you've got that locked in, you've got that for 30 years. Markets are anticipatory. So once the virus is past its peak, prices of real estate should be rather buoyant. Be mindful, too, that because we focus on investing in the United States Midwest and South, which are what I call the stable markets instead of those volatile coastal markets, just generally here, coastal properties and stocks here near the start of the decade, really those two things are very much alike. Coastal properties and stocks, they're both overpriced, they're both low yielding, and they're both susceptible to fall in value. So in these times, when it comes right down to it, real estate could look like the cleanest, dirty shirt in the investment world where you get the best risk-adjusted return, better than bond yields, and certainly better than the 2% dividends from the S&P 500. With factories closed, kinks in the supply chain, what that can do is limit housing supply, and housing was already in short supply. I do think that there are some people that either won't have the confidence or the capacity to buy a home for themselves. Well, good. Then what they'll do is rent. You want them renting from you. More people in the renter pool, that is to your advantage, but those people need to have an income. It's important to remember that a pandemic is different from a financial crisis. Bargain basement interest rates, like this world that we've gone into, that can keep businesses afloat, but the social distancing measures recommended by health officials mean canceling events and avoiding crowded places, and that is what curbs spending. Interest rates cannot fix that, although low interest rates are great for borrowers. Think about how this has all affected society, maybe in some other ways that you haven't thought about. I know friends that have spent months training for marathons that were canceled. Major League Baseball, the NHL, and the NBA seasons suspended. Think about the college and high school seniors that might have played their last game without even knowing it. The pandemic ended their career. Did you ever think about that? And of course, let's get some perspective. All of this is minor. Some people have lost their lives to this virus. Others have lung damage. 
How's your grandma doing? Hopefully you get some time to video chat with her. Maybe, just maybe, there is a huge silver lining to all this with people staying home. Maybe more time as a family is what we need. Maybe we've gotten so caught up in following the madness of busyness that this is a reset and that you can have some health and well-being benefits and exercise more. Maybe after the short-term economic losses have faded, some might place a much higher value on what is really, really important in their lives. Maybe. We should salute and express our gratitude to the millions of frontline workers who are making tremendous efforts to help all of us. That includes our superb medical staff, and others that you're not thinking about, like the calm grocery store and pharmacy workers and the tireless drivers that bring important supplies to our hospitals and warehouses and stores and right to your own doorstep. Think about the spouses of some of these people too. My wife is a medical worker and I'm a little fearful that she'll bring the virus home. Realize that fear of the coronavirus may keep people away from restaurants and small businesses who usually operate on small margins. So here's something that you can do. From your favorite local business or restaurant, you can buy a gift card. Buy it directly from that favorite place so that they get the use of your money for the next few weeks or months. And then when things have settled down, You can treat your sweetie to an evening out or buy something for someone else and use your gift card. That's something simple and actionable that you can do to help the economy and your community. Thank you to delivery workers. Thank you to doctors and nurses and medical staff. Thank you to grocery workers. Thank you to truck drivers. Thank you to everyone else I'm not thinking about. If you like to see the headshots of guests that we have here on the show when we do an episode and see the show notes, it's easy. For this episode, number 285, simply go to getrichducation.com slash 285. Now, we might only have the complete lyrics for the episode transcribed for maybe 10% of our shows here. But for both today's show and last week's show, you can see the entire transcription right there. That way you can read along as you listen, or you can share that transcription with someone else who perhaps wants this content but isn't able to hear it. So you can check out getrichducation.com slash 284 for last week's show notes with complete transcription or getrichducation.com slash 285 for today's show. I'll be back with you next week. If you want to help the economy, then you might be best off just staying home. It's part of doing the right thing before you do things right. I'm Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.